Well, now we have a quorum, majority. So, who we are and what are we doing? Why do you sacrifice our time in here? So it is um, advanced quantum chemistry class, and our motto is solve and solvable. So we are solving the problems that do not have exact solutions. So we are looking for approximate solutions, right? We just completed the chapter of the time independent perturbation theory, and it is logical to start time dependent perturbation theory. Why? Who needs it? Why do we need time depending time dependent phenomena? And why we are not happy with exact solutions? Exact solutions are hard. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> okay. But you know, if for most time depending phenomena, it will be oscillations. If you know eigen states, then everything will just oscillate. Which phenomena we are going to describe? Uh, um, we are not gathering here to torture each other with um, hard equations. There should be some, some goal and benefit. So which phenomena should we keep in mind? For which phenomena do we develop the theories? Oscillation, or simple harmonic if it is simple harmonic oscillator and no one perturbs it, then we don't care about it. That solution is not. I can I can imagine two examples when when it is needed, but maybe I just do not want to diverge your thoughts. Maybe you design something better. So when time dependent perturbation is needed, interaction. Oscillating electromagnetic fields. Okay. Um, oscillating electromagnetic field, which is light if it is in the visible range. What else? Well, you cover almost everything. Now we can just split on different ranges of frequency and tell what we want to describe. So if it is visible or infrared or uh, ultraviolet, then, then it is spectroscopy. But if it is radio frequency, if oh, it is microwave. Microwave? Yeah. Just to heat the lunch. Yeah. Good. <laughs> so we use microwave to perturb the lunch. It is our perturbation. Yes. Good. <laughs> what else? They watch TV. Who perturb perturbs who? The antenna perturbs the molecules in the air. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, uh, you're looking to the biomedical implications of TV, that it is not healthy to see nearby. What, what's... Um, Look on chemical applications or oh. something related to chemistry, not general. What about LED? Huh? LED is LED is okay. LED is already up there. But we any LED we are part of by potential, not by light. <laughs> Wave is also. Well, yeah. That's what I'm saying. We're going to different. I was the light, right? Browsing uh, through internet and found uh, entertaining cartoon as a joke, like. You know the joke about spherical horse in a vacuum? I will not repeat it because most of you know. Or maybe a, a different instance, but it is a very similar one. Um, the spherical what? 
spherical horse in a vacuum. The structure of a human from the point of view of, of different uh, different people, different groups of people. So for biologists and, and uh, doctors, I will not repeat because it is a drawing. It shows like lungs, heart, skin, construction of a human being. Then from the point of view of a scientist, of a physicist, like molecules, atoms, acoustic waves, absorption of light, then from the um, point of view of humanities. Fragile cover and rich internal world. <laughs> 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 so, uh, but we are looking from the point of view of case. <laughs> what else? Which experiments? Um, I'm expecting. It is a competition of seven Brandon. Another application when there is a perturbation. STM? NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. STM, okay, NMR. And yes, STM. So the spectra, spectroscopy, and NMR are mostly typical examples when, when we need it. So um, when you bring your nucleus with unpaired speed into magnetic field, it splits. Z component. And then you apply the magnetic periodic periodic magnetic field and you see the resonance between splitting of these levels and the frequency of this um, of the periodic uh, perturbation and then you see whether there is a response of the uh, of this new nuclear speed. And for uh, spectroscopy, you have several levels. You have quantum that induces change of occupation numbers, change of uh, population. It induces occupation of the states that were not occupied originally in the ground state. When the intensity of electric field Is small, it can be considered as perturbation. And uh, typical values of the light intensity that you experience in regular life are variable. They can be considered as perturbation. So, typically, well, uh, the theory is not limited to harmonic oscillating perturbations, but 99.9% .9 of applications are when the perturbation is oscillating, is harmonic. And we are starting to think of the change of occupation numbers. Flip of, uh, yeah, change of occupation numbers. Okay, so, we are done with goals and examples. We do know that general idea of the perturbation theory is that one can split. Well, we are staying in simple quantum mechanics. We always have Hamiltonian, and we want to find wave function and energies. And if we can fraction Hamiltonian onto the 
good and bad, known and unknown, standard and uh, crazy, then we can always start with solution for the known, for the good Hamiltonian, and then consider that this uh, addition, perturbation to Hamiltonian creates small addition, small perturbation to wave functions and to the energies, right? It is what we did before. Now, we are departing from this paradigm and start, we start looking onto different aspects. We will be assuming that energies of states and their, the orbitals, the time independent part of the, of the wave function, are not going to get changed. We are going to look onto the occupation of the states. Or if we make one step back, we are going to look onto the expansion coefficients of the wave function. And we will see, like, if we are staying within introductory level of quantum theory, then uh, there are some postulates. Like, if the system is isolated, you create some occupation of orbitals and it stays forever. Now our system is not isolated. We have some perturbation from a side. And we are looking how the occupations of orbitals change in time. This is our, our goal. And we will slowly wrap out a snowball of equations to address this goal with applications to spectroscopy, NMR, and maybe something else, maybe large box in the microwave. We were telling that our Hamiltonian is zeros order plus perturbation. And in all applications, all situations that we considered, the perturbation was time independent. This function T was constant. But now we are departing from it. Now we are explicitly telling that um, perturbation is time dependent. And we are looking for consequences of this. So we start to look onto time dependent Hamiltonian. Before, we were always resting, we were always trusting, always using as a basis an assumption that time and all other variables can be separated. We can separate time dependence and solve time independent Schrodinger equation. So the general Schrodinger equation is time dependent. And we were um, hoping in our previous life, all meetings before the day, that one can go to the time independent Schrodinger equation due to separation of. So, time dependence is separate from uh, 
all other dependencies. So we were able to base our analysis on time independent choosing regression, and we even didn't mention time dependence in all our uh, previous considerations. But now, when the Hamiltonian becomes time dependent, it, it becomes very uncomfortable to solve again, over and over again, this time independent choosing equation. And we do not have theorems telling if the separation of variables uh, will always be good. This is the question to, to explore if you want to go this way. And we are not going to go this way. We are going to look back on more general time dependent choosing equation and just look for its solution. So since Hamiltonian is time dependent, we are we cannot go to our simplified way. We cannot go to the time dependent, time independent choosing equation. If we wouldn't have a theory that we introduced today, how can we solve time dependent Schrodinger equation? If you were visiting the last night lab, you all always know it, but I will briefly summarize. So how to solve exactly, at least maybe exactly from numerical point of view. So one can propagate, or well, always, in time-dependent phenomena, one needs initial condition, the state of system before we start perturbing. So initial condition is always needed. So we function times zero, and then. One can formulate the quantum mechanics problem as a problem of predicting the future. How to generate wave function in the future if you know wave function in the past. How to propagate forward in time. So we can mention three, three ways. One, if you know wave function at time t, you can get wave function at time t plus delta t by finite increment. So it is, uh, it follows from showing the equation. If we limit the finite differences, then we can do small steps, additional increments, and then go from step by step. Then, um, Second, if we know wave function times zero, we can integral Hamiltonian over time. So Hamiltonian is in the power of exponential. And this is called evolution operator. So this one will generate wave function at time t at once. And the third way would be to represent this evolution operator as sequence of infinitesimal Hamiltonian at time one, delta t, Hamiltonian at time two, delta t, and then it is a uh, product of infinitesimal evolution operators. And if you apply them one by one to initial wave function, here is the product of many of those. Then we will get wave function at time t. This all is correct. But this all is correct. But I'm just going to focus to let me see. Yes. 
but it is uh, not always possible if we deal with large systems because uh, not many things can be done analytically and uh, numerically one can do advanced techniques only for small bases for systems for small systems uh, if it is not visible I can bring it To the focus. So this is good but very expensive numerical and we are going to introduce approximate solution that will be orders of magnitude quicker. Okay? So which sort of solutions we are looking for. So if we have So we can always represent the wave function, time-dependent wave function, as a superposition of uh, general of general solutions. We can build a partial solution in such way that the by selecting coefficients, it will match the initial conditions. So this wave function will be a solution of the time dependent Schrodinger equation. to set up agreement that this functional form will be valid even if the Hamiltonian is time dependent. So this functional form will be considered universal. universal. So we will be always looking for solution in this in this form. Why? Because if the uh, time independent eigenstates form a good set of functions, then they are good basis, and they, uh, any function can be allowed as superposition of those with correct coefficients. Coefficients are time, time dependent too. Right? We will make them time dependent in a minute or two minutes. Yes. So we know that if our Hamiltonian is time independent, Then we know the solution. Then we solve time dependent group, time independent group equation for phi and for energies, and uh, these coefficients will be selected according to initial conditions, and they will not change in time. But now the question is, how the perturbation to the Hamiltonian will change the expansion coefficients?
So we assume that the good failure is time dependent, and then we, we will tell that expansion coefficients will be in your form series in powers of lambda using the same idea as, as we did before. So if we change something is coming to again, then something will change in expansion coefficients. And we are going to look into this change as powers as power in this auxiliary parameter lambda. Where lambda equals zero corresponds to no perturbation, lambda equals one corresponds to full scale perturbation. And we can consider transition from zero to one as smooth transition that doesn't drastically change the functions. What are we going to do? What is our plan? to plug in expansion of coefficients into our definition of time-dependent wave function. Plug in this definition of Hamiltonian in this wave function into time-dependent <coughs> equation and see what happens. I'm going to erase this uh, panel and keep, keep writing it to this side. So instead of wave function, we are writing summation over all basis states that evolve in time. According to eigenenergies, solution of time independent Schrodinger equation in absence of perturbation. And here in the bracket, we are plugging in the
power series in auxiliary parameter. Right? The one that we decided to use. So we are done with the left part of Schrodinger equation. Now for the right part, instead of Hamiltonian, we use H0 plus lambda H prime, which is time dependent. And then it acts on a wave function, which is summation over expansion coefficients times time independent uh, basis functions times uh, trivial time evolution. And the coefficients are the same as on the left part. Ci zeros plus first order in lambda. Make sense? So our goal is to find corrections to the expansion coefficients. So e to the i magnified h bar e sub i is outside of the brackets? But it's under um, the summation? It is under summation. The index i is the same here, here and there. So this is exact yeah. expansion coefficient and multiplied by, by this uh, tree of time dependence. And the energy and this Energy is zero uh, order, zero for, uh, unperturbed. Because we do not modify basis functions. And we, we do not modify their energies. Make sense? Yeah, but that will give us, that will give cross terms that cancel. Yes. It is what we are going to, to, to do here to identify them and cancel. It's not a solution. Uh, well, no. I... Okay, so um, what is the main paradigm of the perturbation theory? That if you have two power series, If you have two series, then this notation is equivalent that powers, coefficients in front of powers of the same uh, coefficients in front of the same powers are equal. So for the zeroth power, we do have t dt summation c zero order i phi zero order i e minus a h bar e t equals So it is a trivial. Right now uh, it is boring because it is equivalent to the solution of uh, unperturbed Hamiltonian which is time independent. It is what we agreed long time ago. So that if the um, expansion coefficients in, in absence of the perturbation plugged into complete wave function, 
it will be solution. It will satisfy the time dependent Schrodinger group, which good. We knew it. Now for the first order. We need to identify terms that are first order in lambda. So it will be this one on the left, and then there will be two terms on the right. Zeros order Hamiltonian times first order correction to wave function <coughs> and correction to Hamiltonian, perturbation to Hamiltonian times unperturbed expansion coefficient for, for the for the wave function. Right? So I'm going to take this pair and this pair. And this is boring and a little too much calligraphy. The ideas is much shorter. If we if we would have less time, everything can be squeezed into in like very brief. Now we are going through all this um, intermediate steps just for complete picture. So if you close eyes and sleep for ten minutes, you use nothing. <laughs> So D, D is summation of I. Now we do not write lambda, we just C sub I first order times I zero I plus I E power D minus T minus I E power. So now we do whatever was with uh, underlined single time. Unperturbed Hamiltonian. Summation C first order so I and the trivial time evolution. Now we are going to put the, here the pair that was. Um, Underlined by way of just time to it and summation I C zero square I C Let's make a vacation and skip second order for now. Good. So what, what do we do typically when we meet in this class? Not only in this class, in any quantum class. We find um, bra and cat convolution, and then we start thinking after. So this is a function without conjugation. You can bring in this uh, cat notation. And if we want to deal with expansion coefficients only, we need to get rid of the wave function out of this equation. And we can always do it by convoluting the equation with the bra multiplied from the left and then integrating it up. Then if the basis set is selected in the right way, we will use orthogonality relationships and get rid of them, the wave functions. When we consider time independent perturbation theory, the, there were specific, corrupt, complicated orthogonality relations. Now we come to the old, good, simple orthogonality of the wave functions. So we will, we will, we will use orthogonality that uh, I, 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 J will be equal to delta I, J. So they will be one if the, if the indices coincide and zero if they do not coincide. There is a hope that, that upon 
multiplying There, because we, we need to put it in front of finger to finger. And here, we need to put it in front of finger to finger. We hope that upon plugging it inside, we will use the fact that this function is eigenfunction of this zeros Hamiltonian, and some of the operator combinations, matrix elements, will convert into, well, some terms can, will be cancelled. So the, right now we have three terms, and we hope to get something simple. What else can we expect? What else uh, we haven't done? Any ideas? Again. Our, what, what is our goal? Let's, if you do not, sometimes, I, I don't know, you see, derive something and then you forget, why I'm doing this? What is my goal? Should I stop it now? What do we want to get? Coefficient. Yes. yes. We want to get coefficient C sub i of the first order correction, these coefficients. And they are time dependent. So we want you to get time-dependent coefficients. So if you want to have explicit time dependence, then we should have differential equations for these coefficients that we need to integrate. So, so we are just trying to look forward what, what is going to develop. So we will need an explicit differential equations for first-order coefficients. And here we have differential operator acting on all this uh, enchilada, all these uh, factors. But if we want to find first order correction, we need to develop d dt c1 equals something of c1. And then upon solving, we will find how does it explicitly depend on time. Okay. So after all this boring manipulation, we need to get equations like this. What are the conclusions? That we need to apply differential operator to each term and see um, if we can split time dependence of this exponential and time dependence of the C coefficient. First order correction to the expansion condition. Make sense? So we are going to do three operations, and it should be like a couple of minutes for each. Apply differentiation to the to this bracket, open it. Second, multiply by bra from the left, convolute and remove as much as we can. And third, we hope to get differential equations for C, and then we will solve it by integration. It will be true. Three steps. Do you have them in, in plan? Uh, done, done, expansion, perturbation C, yes, plugin, yes, initial condition, Three steps. I am going to erase the word number two and uh, write the
So let's just do this uh, left part only. Um, summation goes outside with its orbitals, differentiation. Then we apply differentiation to expansion coefficient and keep the rest unchanged. Plus, we keep the expansion coefficient unchanged. We function unchanged because uh, it is an independent. And then we apply differentiation to exponential. How to differentiate an exponential? Put everything that except the independent variable up front. Times exponential itself. Yes, yes. We probably can write it in a little shorter way. D D T of the efficient. So we put outside of the brackets the time independent wave function and the explanation. And trivial time evolution. Okay? So it is the left part of, uh, of our Schrodinger equation, of the first correction part of the Schrodinger equation. And on the on the right, let me just rewrite it so that you, you have it fresh here. So I can place summation outside of everything. I can put I over each bar also outside of the, of the brackets. Let's let's keep the the, the rest uh, inside. So each zero times C. First order i with function get minus i h bar t plus first order perturbation to Hamiltonian times c zero order times i minus the order times e minus i So we are done with differentiating left part. Our next step is to multiply by ra from the left. Let me bring another color from another room so that you'll be more uh, visual appeal. Here is it. 
any non-trivial steps. The rest is math. Now we call mathematicians inside also. So this one will be equal delta ki because we functions are orthogonal, right? Here you can put coefficient Outside, and now we do have four k h zero and pi Hamiltonian zeros order to a function zeros order will be energy zeros order. Then energy can be placed up front, and then you have orthogonality of the k and pi. So it will be sub i times delta k i. Right? And we, uh, later we will make summation and delta function and uh, summation sign will disappear, will give each other. And this term cannot be simplified. We, we have to, to keep it and it will be the most important part of the, everything we are doing. So, Zero order of a function, first order time dependent correction to Hamiltonian, zero order of a function. So this matrix element of perturbation in basis of unperturbed wave functions. Matrix element of Time dependent further equation in basis of unperturbed wave function. So we can rewrite our expanded Schrodinger equation with these delta functions, or we can do the initialization of delta and summation in our heads and write the result right away. So this summation and this delta function will disappear. And everywhere when we had i, it will be replaced by k. So our left side will be t dt, first order correction to wave function, depending on t, and the index will be k, because summation and delta function delete each other. And replacement of i to the k is our price. Now, minus imaginary unit e bar k is order minus i h bar energy k and t. We have done this left part, and now we are doing the right part, right side. So, in the first term, we do have delta function. This delta function 
meets summation symbol and they erase each other, right? So minus i hr zero order sub k c first order sub k and three more time evolution minus i h bar b sub k zero t. Even before we go to the next term, can we identify some something sim some similarities with the left side? Let's consider this one. This one. Find any similarities or differences. So factor minus i over h bar here and there. Same. Energy first. Uh, zero's order with index k, same. <coughs> Correction to the wave function of the first order with index k, here and there, same. Trivial time evolution uh, with index k, same. So if all parts are the same, then we can cancel, because it is the same part on the left and right. Whew, life is a little easier. Now let's uh, process this term. So we do not have delta function. Therefore, we need to keep the summation sign. Minus i over h bar e summation over i phi zero order uh, perturbation to Newtonian matrix element series over i e to the power minus i over h bar to the evolution. What is missing? What one? Factor is missing in this expression. Yes, of which order? First, for zero. First, 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 on the left hand side. No, it's on the left hand side, so you need. No, on the first, first order. No. No. Zero. From my records, it's zero. Let's argue. I so it is. It is. It doesn't need to be self-consistent. It could be um, first order linearly coming up from zero order. So I'm just practicing calligraphy and writing down We can call this matrix element just for shorthand notation H prime K I, right? So we do have differential equation that will help us to find the 
first order correction to expansion coefficients. Luckily, it is not a true differential equation. Well, it is differential equation, but um, it doesn't have the unknown function in several terms. It's just time derivative equals to explicit function of something. So you can get answer by direct integration. Right? So it depends on the zeros order expansion coefficients which are known from initial conditions. From the time when system was not yet perturbed. Typically it is ground state. So if you want to integrate, then it will C one T T integration from initial time, which can be selected as a zero to time t. of matrix element of the perturbation i of t times e so in order since we integrate over this mute variable you can search it as for example t prime t t prime and then the range of change for this variable will be from 0 to t. So, multiplied by 0 squared. Are we happy or it can be simplified even further? This, this is general enough. But um, in a lot of applications or a lot of um, studying materials, the initial conditions are selected in a very simple form. That originally the lowest orbital is occupied and uh, the rest of orbitals are unoccupied in case it is one electron problem. So let's simplify this expression once again in account of the simple and practical initial condition. So I'm going to erase the content of, of this word and add one line more. And then we will be done. So one can assume that only the ground state is uh, occupied and uh, all excited states if the energy goes 
those costs are unoccupied. Or one can generally tell that the state number n is occupied and generally all others are unoccupied. Delta I n. Right? So if all but one is zeros, the function is normalized. <coughs> Absolute value squares of your uh, degree. Then the first order correction for the expansion coefficient will be so summation. Here we have summation over i, and then here we will have instead of c sub i zero, we will have this delta function i n, and then the rest unchanged. Integral of zero t dt i h i minus i e r e plus t prime. Right? Nothing is forgotten. So if summation and delta function meet each other, they get cancelled, and, and as a price, we replace i to n everywhere, where n is not just the arbitrary index. It is a number of initially occupied state. So instead of i, you plug in m. m k t. <coughs> so if this is the first order correction, then the overall expansion coefficient is zeros order plus first order plus so forth, which will be uh, zeros order will result in delta in k minus i over h bar, and then this uh, integral dt prime So as soon as we know explicit form for the perturbation Hamiltonian, and we can find it, its matrix element, then it will be just multiplying this matrix element by postulating exponential, integrating, and then we have solution. We have the time dependence of the expansion coefficients. So we have basically solution of time dependent Schrodinger equation. So we know, right now we have a prescription. We know the change of the occupations or wave function expansion coefficients that system is experiencing upon time-dependent perturbation. We know the response of the system of the external perturbation. This is not super universal. This will work only if perturbation is small. But it gives, first, it is very um, cheap numerical. And 
for applications that we are looking at for oscillating periodic oscillating electromagnetic waves, this will be sine, cosine, or exponential multiplied by constant. So integral of sine, of cosine, of exponential can be easily taken. You do not need computers. So as you know that it is periodic oscillation with given frequency and given amplitude, this integral is taken analytically, and you do have, well, we do not have time to do it this meeting, but when we meet next time, we will consider examples, applications. So it is very simple prescription that allows to see response of a system to periodic perturbation. So we did um, differential, rough and left, initial state, initial conditions, and uh, what else? Integration. So I think our program is complete for today. This one, the answer can make it a little bigger so it can be visible. Here is the answer. We are going to continue from here oh, no. <laughs> next time. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Let me announce that uh, meeting number 12 is complete. Meeting is dismissed. Feel free to leave if you need to go somewhere. I'm going to put us off record and stay here to answer any questions. Do you want to do the presentation now? No. We'll get there at 1.35.